This is 10 Animal Crossing New Horizon tips and tricks. This is the third part of four, so make sure you check out those other three parts. And let's get started. There's a lot to say about balloons, actually. Balloons will come from one direction during the day and the other direction during the night. And I can't say which direction that is because it has to do with which side of your island your pier is on. Mine is on the left side of my island. So during the day, the balloons are coming from the right side and at night, the balloons are coming from the left side. Balloons can spawn at any time ending in a four or a nine. But at that point, it's going to be over the ocean. So it's a lot easier to look up and look for a balloon at times ending in a zero or a five. That doesn't just mean like two o'clock and two o five, that could mean two forty and two forty five. Um, it definitely has to do with wind conditions. So if you're trying to get seasonal items which come in a balloon, like the autumn items or the spring items, and it's a particularly windy time, just park in one spot, don't move, and then you'll hear the balloons coming overhead about every five to ten minutes. Another trick I have is I always try and carry two slingshots because it can be really frustrating if a slingshot breaks and then um, you would have to go into a building to make another slingshot and that's gonna take that balloon away once you enter a building. It's not true with the warp pipes that come with the Mario items. That doesn't make the balloons go away, but going inside a door, going into a house or a business is going to clear that balloon away. So make sure you're carrying two slingshots so you don't miss out on any balloons. One of my goals when I'm playing Animal Crossing is to get the portrait from each of my villagers. Um, so I try and raise my friendship level up high enough to get the portrait. And then once I've gotten the portrait, I'm ready to have a new villager take their spot and get the portrait from them as well. So my next tips have to do with raising friendship level and also lowering friendship level. So uh, the way to raise a friendship level is to, uh, if the villager runs over to you and would like something in your inventory or would like to play a game or wants to do something, always do that. That's going to raise the friendship level definitely. Also, you want to match the gifts with their personality type. So if someone is sporty, you're going to give them sporty items. But once you have uh, bred the roses, so you have golden roses, I found that golden roses never fail. You can give a golden rose to them every day, and every personality type, every villager is going to love those gold roses, and they raise your friendship level a lot. So if you have gold roses... Give those as a gift and you'll raise the friendship level high enough to get the portrait. It's not as fun as selecting a personalized gift for them every day, but it's, it's a no-fail option. On the reverse side, lowering friendship level, don't believe the common knowledge that hitting them with a net is going to lower their friendship level. That's actually not the best way to do that. They consider it an interaction and it, it's, not, it's gonna work against lowering the friendship level. So what you want to do is give them a gift that is something that they do not like. And the no fails for that are things that they can't use. They can't switch out their wallpaper. They can't switch out their flooring. So giving them wallpaper and flooring is almost 
always going to be something that lowers the friendship level. Also, they can't wear shoes and they can't wear pants, bottoms, skirts. Uh, So giving them those clothing items are also going to lower the friendship level. You can also just not interact with them at all that day um, to lower their friendship level as well. That is another option. But it's not going to be as fast as giving them something that actively lowers their friendship level. There is another way to get villagers to leave your island that I actually like best. Um, It's kind of mean-spirited to either ignore your villager or to give them a bad gift. I really like this way best, but it involves amiibo cards. So if you invite a, a villager from an amiibo card and your island is full, all the houses are full, and they have to have a villager leave to move onto your island only with amiibo cards not with random campers that show up you can choose which of your current villagers you want to leave and you can choose any villager you want it's not going to be randomly selected like it is with the usual camper And while that screen is up, it's really valuable to take a look through that because that's going to show you the highest friended villager on your island all the way down through the lowest friended villager on your island. So you can see where your friendship level is with each of those villagers. So this is my favorite way to have villagers leave my island, but it does involve amiibo cards. A really great way to get money is to trade your Nook points for Bell Vouchers at the ATM. And you can get 3,000 Bells per Bell Voucher when you sell them at the Nook Stop. Now, I am waiting for an update where you can multi-purchase through the ATM because it's actually a lengthy and monotonous process, but if you are trying to uh, pay off your house loan, there are a few better ways to make bells quickly than to trade in your nook points for bell vouchers and um, pay off that loan. There are lots of songs to get from K.K. Slider during your Saturday concerts, but did you know that there are three hidden songs that you don't get unless you specifically ask for them by name? One is called Animal City. There's one called Drive-In without the G and with the apostrophe. You have to spell it exactly that way to get it. And the third one is called Farewell. So when you have a KK concert, select the option where you can type in the name of the song you want and type in those three songs on three different weeks and get the hidden songs. For my next tip, it can be really frustrating when you are trying to find a villager and they are nowhere to be found. Um, I would say check the museum first of all, but the easiest way to do it is to save and close and then load up the game again and that resets their positions. So if you've searched and you absolutely cannot find a villager and they can find good hiding spots, save, close, and reopen and that resets all of their positions. There are some things you will want to do where saving and closing and opening the game again aren't going to work for you. And what you need to do is close the game without saving and reopen the game. The process is um, to hit your home key while you're playing Animal Crossing. And then if you have 
multiple users. It will say underneath why, hit the button Y to change user. And then um, it'll warn you, you haven't saved. Are you sure what you want to uh, change users? And then if you say yes, it'll let you select users and then you can just select the same user again. And yes, I created a user for my cat, Micah. So I could have another house with more storage and Animal Crossing. And that's a hidden extra bonus tip. Um, if you're really desperate for storage, you can uh, create a user and then add them to your island and have a whole other house for storage. But if you don't have two users on your Switch, open up another game. And it will say that you would have to close the software you are currently using and say close. And then you can just um, close out of that other game and open Animal Crossing again. So the process is different if there are other users that use your Switch. You hit Y to change users if there are. And you would have to open another game if you don't have other users on your Switch. One reason you might want to close out of the game without saving and get a second try is if there's someone uh, at your campsite that you really, really, really want to join your island, but um, they make you play the card game uh, to join your island and you lose the card game. And who knows when you're going to see that villager again. Before leaving the tent, you can close out of the game the way I previously showed you. And it's as if that card game never happened, uh, which can be very, very handy. Another reason you might want to restart the game without saving is every five days, a villager will ask you to leave your island and uh, if you close without saving and uh, open the game again on that day where a villager asks you um, you can have a different villager ask you than the one who asked you before. It won't cycle through all the villagers, but it'll cycle through a few. Um, and that's another reason why you might want to close without saving. Or you can just, oops, and give the wrong gift to someone or do something that you'd really rather you hadn't. Um, so yeah, those are some of the reasons that you might want to close without saving. Well, we're on the subject of cheaty things you can do in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Uh, another cheaty thing you can do is called farming for art. And what you're going to do is on a day when red is on your island, when you see that little ginkgo leaf on your map, you're going to look and see what art he has. And then... Um, purchase any art that you want to purchase, but you don't have to be done with art if you're not opposed to some time traveling. You're going to save out of the game, close the game, and then time change the time on your clock in its settings to 4.59 a.m. and then reopen the game before the clock changes to 5 a.m. And if you're not an early bird, like I'm not an early bird, 5 a.m. is when Isabel does her morning announcements if you're playing through the night. So um, you're going to hear your morning announcements and then you can run over to Red's trawler and you have a brand new ship full of art and items that you can purchase. Um, yeah, I have been playing Animal Crossing a lot, maybe not surprisingly, and I still am trying to get all of the art from Red. 
I haven't personally tried this yet, but I have friends who have. Um, and especially sculptures, I, I am still waiting for some sculptures to show up. Um, I get the fake Vitruvian Man with a water spot a lot, and I get the fake Mona Lisa a lot, so it can be a frustratingly long wait for red, so I think I'm going to try out this tip myself. And another thing about Red's Trawler is um, in your store, based on what type of island you have, you're going to get items in certain colors only. If you've been waiting for an item in a, a certain color and it's been forever and you haven't gotten it, there's a reason for that. Only certain colors will show up on your island for furniture but the same is not true for red. He's going to charge you more, but he's going to sell you colors of items that your island store otherwise would not have. So, might be worth cheating with red. Typing can be frustrating since you have to scroll all around the screen and select each letter but there are a couple ways where you can speed up your typing. One is to make use of the shortcuts on the keyboard. You can do space with Y and B for delete, and you can confirm with the plus key. Um, I am pretty messy with typing, so those have really helped me uh, not hit confirm when I don't want to send the message quite yet. You can also download the Nintendo Switch app and type into the app and it will show up onto uh, your screen in the Switch if the app and your Switch are connected. Um, and it's so much easier typing onto a phone or tablet even than it that you have the app downloaded on than it is typing with your switch controllers. So I will call this my bonus tip for the video because it's something that is my theory and I don't know if I've ever seen it anywhere but I have a theory uh, that you can tell how well your villager really likes the gift you give them by their uh, hand waving. So they will say like, oh, they've been waiting for this garbage can their whole life and they've always wanted a garbage can. If you've given a garbage them a garbage can 10 days in a row, they will still say that if it fits their character type. But how well do you know if they really like it? Um, and I think the way to tell is to look for their hand waving. If they wave both hands really quickly and excitedly, I think you gave them a really, really gift, good gift that they really like. But if they do a one-handed wave, kind of like hello, I think you gave them a gift that they kind of like, but don't absolutely love. And both of those are gonna affect how much you've added to their friendship level in different amounts. What do you think of this theory? Do you think that I'm right? Have you noticed this as well? What do you think? All right, that was 10 more plus a bonus. Tips and tricks for Animal Crossing New Horizons. There is still one more of these to come out. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. If you like this video, please give it a like and leave me a comment. Bye, see you in the next one.